السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهر أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهر أن محمدا عبده ورسوله الحمد لله We can be praising Allah سبحانه وتعالى We praise Him and we ask His help and we seek His forgiveness I'm so sorry, this is probably going to be very emotional for me. <laughs> Just because I would rather to be on a member. Given a khutbah just like any other Friday. And not through just a, a camera or a life screen. But we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inshallah, that this is going to be, um, it will come to an end soon. Alhamdulillah. <coughs> so let's start again. In Alhamdulillah, Nahmaduhu, wa Nasta'inu, wa Nasta'gfiru, wa Na'udhu Billahi min Shururi Anfusina, wa Min Sayyati A'malina, Man Yahdihi Allahu Fala Mudullalah, wa Man Yudlil Fala Hadiyalah, wa Ashadu an La Ilaha Illa Allah, wa Ashadu Anna Muhammadan Abduhu wa Rasooluh. We begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we praise Him and we ask His help and we seek His forgiveness. And we seek refuge in Allah. <laughs> And we seek refuge in Allah from the evil of our deeds. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala his forgiveness. Allahumma ameen. <clears throat> Alhamdulillah. Hopefully, inshallah, and we'll pray that everybody is safe and, and, and healthy, inshallah. We'll pray that everybody um, listens to the recommendations of the state and the county and just stay home and, and follow the recommendations, inshallah. You know... Um, during this difficult time and any when we go through trials or through tribulations the most difficult question that people have during that time is the question why you know it is the most difficult thing to wrap our mind uh, around it's the most difficult thing for our hearts to accept and the question why it is the most common question in any theology, not just an Islamic belief, but also in any theology, why is probably the most difficult question to answer. And each tradition has its own, its own answers. But the one thing that we all need to know is that we human cannot always comprehend these answers or these questions. Um, you know, in our in our religion, in our book, in Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke about the creation of Adam. And um, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he talked about the story of the creation of Adam and uh, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded the angels to, to prostrate. And so even the angels asked, they asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, why do you want to create humans? Why would you create someone who is capable of creating problems, creating evil and corruption on earth? 
they weren't questioning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or challenging him. Allah could have just walked them through and showed them everything that, um, that would happen and the wisdom behind it. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kind of told him that you have to trust me on this. You know, he said, Inni a'lamu ma la ta'lamun. I know that which you don't know. So even angel, angels ask that question. So at the end of the day, sometimes, are not, sometimes things are not going to, 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 to make sense to us. Uh, sometimes things are not going to make sense even to the angels. And so we have to trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have to believe in that foundation, you know. Uh, I know what you don't know. Inni a'lamu ma la ta'lamun. And we have to, to, to believe in, in, in the divine destiny of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, if we go through the, the pillars of our faith, we will see that the last pillar is to believe in Al-Qadr, to believe in the destiny of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhumah, he said, it is a pillar that if a person establishes it, then he established the Tawheed. And if a person destroys it, then he destroys the Tawheed. And the Tawheed, the unity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the foundation upon which this religion is built. And so, without believing in Allah and in the Day of Judgment, nothing makes sense. Interestingly enough though, when, when you go through the Qur'an, you will, um, you will see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stresses on belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, and um, um, and belief also in the hereafter. You don't see too much stress in the belief of the Qadr, in the destiny of the Qur'an. Even though the, this is the one pillar that most, most people struggle with. And there is a reason for that, you know, because just as w without a strong belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the hereafter, nothing makes sense. With belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, everything makes sense. You know, everything is acceptable. Everything is um, digestible, you know. Everything can be solved with belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and believe in the hereafter. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stressed on it in the Quran. You know, we need to understand, uh, we need to understand something, you know. Um, evil, suffering, pain are the exception and they are not the rule, you know. Um, Think about it. Any calamity, the loss of loved one, this virus that, that, that is going around, you know, the loss of wealth, sickness, these are not the default. They are always the exception. The default is that most of people are healthy most of the time. Sickness, inshallah, is just temporary occurrence, you know. And the default is that there will be peace, inshallah. War is the exception. But we as humans, we, we have the tendency to focus on the negative. So there is so many benefits when, when you even think about calamities and trials. And, and let me tell you, there is no one on the face of this earth who is not tested, who does not go through trials. You know, every single creature that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created goes through, through trials and tribulations. Even animals, sometimes they say animals, even animals go through, you know, anxiety and fear and worries and stuff like that. So it is a part of who we, we really are. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا نَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ We will test you. We will test you. You know, and they say, well, وَاوُوا لِلْقَسَمْ that, 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 that certainly Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will test you. And, um, you know, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, one time when a man came and he asked him, Ya Rasulullah, who is the most tested among people? Then the Prophet ﷺ said, Al-Anbiya wal Mursaleen, the Prophets and Messengers. And then the man said, Then who? And then the Prophet ﷺ said, Then, then the next best, then, then the next best, Yubtala Rajulu ala Qadri Deeni, that the person will be afflicted uh, according to the level of his faith. The stronger the, the, the faith, the stronger the calamity. And sometimes also when, when people go through these trials, they ask that question, Is it? Really a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or is it mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And I, I will answer that question. I made a short video yesterday and I posted it on Facebook and I just gave a, a short answer to it. And that's what I believe in. Um, but I will, I will uh, come back to, 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 to this later, inshallah. Uh, there is so, mu so many wisdom 
uh, behind calamities, behind trials and tribulations. There's so many books were written about that. The Izz ibn Abd al-Salam had a book that is written about, you know, tribulations. Um, um, I think also Ibn al-Qayyim, rahimahullah, he also wrote a book about the tribulations. Um, uh, it's called uh, Al-Balaya wal mihan and, um, and they all spoke about how sometimes, you know, uh, or one of the benefits, you know, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَعَسَىٰ أَن تَكْرَهُ شَيْئًا وَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ Maybe you dislike something, but there are so many benefits in it. You know, and, and, and in Izz ibn Abdul Salam, he talked about the Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam and Sara when they went through the trials with the uh, king of Egypt. And subhanAllah, and he says one of the wisdom of that trial was that the king of Egypt gave him uh, Hajar, who bore Ismail alayhi salam, from whose progeny was born the, was born the, the master of mankind, or Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So... That is, you know, a as we say, you know, a um, a blessing in disguise. You know, uh, calamities allow us to reconnect to our Creator. Problems help us to, you know, revive our relationship with Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala to become more spiritual. Just because life and the comfort of this life cause us to be disconnected from our religion, from our creator, from our worship. So when a calamity happens, everybody reconnects to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You see more people nowadays, they make in dua. You see more people nowadays, they make in dhikr. You see more people nowadays are, are trying to revive that relationship uh, uh, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I wonder if... It, I mean, I'm sure that it happens for a reason, and, and even the timing, there's a wisdom behind it. It happens just right before Ramadan. So people, maybe people will just reconnect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, remove the rust off of their hearts, you know, revive that relationship between them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before Ramadan comes. You know, Ibn al-Qayyim said something so beautiful. He said, any hardship that brings you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's not a calamity. You know, any thing or any hardship, any trouble that brings you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's not a calamity. Rather, it is a blessing in disguise. It's a blessing in disguise. Just because there is uh, there's, uh, no greater blessing than, than being connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Any tragedy that, that helps you to revive your faith, is not really a tragedy. It's a blessing in disguise. You know, there is that ayah that I always remember when when I talk about trials and tribulations. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا إِلَىٰ أُمَمٍ مِّنْ قَبْلِكُمْ فَأَخَذْنَاهُمْ بِالْبَأْسَاءِ وَالضَّرَّاءِ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَتَضَرَّعُونَ That we have already sent messengers to nations before you. Then we seized him with poverty and, and hardships. Why? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَعَلَّهُمْ يَتَضَرَّعُونَ So that perhaps they might humble themselves. Perhaps they might revive and reconnect themselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So um, that's really the ideal response to, to calamity, you know, to reconnect yourself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to revive your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, sometimes we get people blame Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the suffering and, and the pain that takes place in the world. Whether it's a war or problems or illnesses or suffering of good people or suffering of poor children. You know, we find a lot of people who blame Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But let me tell you something, you know, evil exists when we allow it to exist. You know, corruption exists. When, when, when people don't do anything about it. You know, there is a powerful quote of a man who said that uh, I just wanted to ask Allah why he allowed suffering, evil, and pain in the world. But I, I was afraid that he might ask me the same question, you know. And all of these questions about evil and pain, the majority can be traced really back to humans, to what humanity does wrong, you know. Uh, humanity started wars. Humanity ignores it as well, you know. Humanity has allowed the death of, of over one half a million people in Syria, 
for the last seven or eight or nine years. You know, humanity caused it and ignored it. You know, there is an oppressor and there is a silent observer. So there are there were governments who could intervene, but they choose not to. You know, virus and diseases are the same. If you remember the uh, the famous talk of Bill Gates after the Ebola virus uh, outbreak, you know, in uh, 2013, 2014, uh, he said we uh, that uh, uh, forgot exactly what he said, but but kind of you know we we either change the the way we live change our lifestyle or these viruses will keep coming you know and it's very true it's very true and so may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us Allahumma ameen so it is one of the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala one of the signs of his mercy that he send us signs every now and then to remind us of him you know to remind us that he is still in control you know that that uh Everything around us belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he sent us these signs to invite us again to uh, reconnect with him. Um, th they said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, um, the report says whenever he sees, uh, when he used to see a dark cloud, you know, he would have a, a very uh, concerned look on his face sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he would pray, Allahumma sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, O oh Allah, mercy, your mercy, your mercy. And he would say in Allah that your Lord is asking you to go back and, and repent, you know, and, and so whenever you see signs like that, you know, like just what's going on, you know, we should turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in prayer, we should turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in dhikr, we should seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness, you know, if إِذَا رَأَيْتُمْ ذَلِكَ as he said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam فَافْزَعُوا إِلَى ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ وَدُعَائِهِ وَالْإِسْتِغْفَارِ so if you see something like that, flee to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Make dhikr. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness and make dua as well. You know, uh, um, again, um, inshallah, this is, um, as I said, this that wasn't really planned or anything like that. Um, and I'm sorry for uh, how the video started. Um, I just, uh, I knew that that was going to be a very emotional uh, video for me or a live stream for me because of, you know, I would rather be on a member right now giving a khutbah in front of hundreds and thousands of people uh, than just like sitting in front of a screen and talk to you through the live stream. But it is what it is. We'll take what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us and, and, and we'll be also thankful for everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us. And this is also a time that you reflect on everything you know, in every blessing and every favor that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you. You know, um, a lot of us take things for granted. We, we take everything for granted, you know. Last Friday, I came here during the time of Jum'ah, and uh, I was just walking around in a parking lot, and there was no cars, nobody, nothing. It was just me and the, and the people here in the office. And um, subhanAllah, it was, it was so, so emotional as well. It was so hurtful. And I said, subhanAllah, how a great of a blessing is having a community and having a masjid and having a jum'ah. And now it's taken away from us. And then I, I, I remember the dua of the Prophet. When he said, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min zawali ni'matik, you know, Ya Allah, I, I, I seek your protection from the decline of your, of your blessings. And, and this is a blessing, you know, having a community is a blessing. Having a masjid is a blessing. You know, having our scholars and our imams is also a great blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we should not take these things for granted, you know. Um, so uh, thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all the favors and all the blessings that you have in your, in your life. You know, if you're healthy, thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you have a shelter, a place where you can go to at night, a place that you can, that you call home, thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that, you know. Because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, you know, if you have food for the day and if you have a place, a, a place that you call home and you're healthy in your body, you know, then 
فقد حيزت له الدنيا بما فيها then, then you should consider yourself the happiest person on earth you know um, and if you look at those three things you will see a lot of people all over the world they do not have what we have you know we were just talking about Ebola and malaria diseases these diseases have gone especially the malaria has gone long time ago there are people in Africa right now until today daily there are kids who die from malaria because they cannot they cannot afford the medicine you know there there are people all over the world who do not have what we have so in Allah yasta'tibukum as the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that it might be that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to remind you with all the blessings that you have and he wants to remind you to show gratitude for these blessings you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَلَإِنْ شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ If you show gratitude, I will increase you. لَا أَزِيدَنَّكُمْ You know, الْإِسْتِمْرَارِيَةِ As they say in Arabic, which means that I will increase you, I will increase you, I will increase you. You know, none stop increase from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But, the, but our duty is to show gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for these blessings. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless this community. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all of you. Allahumma ameen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, bring us back to the masjid, inshallah, and bring an end to this very soon. I'm sorry, I, I really um, I really apologize uh, for my state right now, but... Um, Hopefully, inshallah, that you all forgive me. Um, inshallah, what we are planning to do is uh, every Friday until this, uh, inshallah, will end soon, we will, uh, we will do live streaming during the time of Jum'ah, inshallah. I've already my daily uh, uh, or my weekly classes. Uh, alhamdulillah, we did the Women uh, Book Club. Uh, alhamdulillah, the same people who usually attend, attended through the uh, live stream. Uh, we did like a Zoom. We have a, a a mailing list for the people who attend. So we send them a link. We send them a, uh, the informations, and everybody attended. Alhamdulillah. On Wednesday night as well, you know, there was a uh, the the class about the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the Shama'il Shama'il Tirmidhi. Um, uh, everybody attended. Alhamdulillah. You know. So from now on, inshallah, for now. Uh, we gonna be doing you know uh, our weekly classes uh, online, inshallah. Uh, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you. I had a lot in my mind to, to say, uh, prepared to say, but uh, alhamdulillah, you know, alhamdulillah. Um, look, everything is going to be good, inshallah. Yeah, everything will be fine, inshallah. You know, um, <coughs> this life is, is just, you know, it's, it's not Jannah. It's not meant to be Jannah. There will always be suffering. There will always be trials. There will always be difficulties. You know, as as we said before, life is one difficulty after another, one task after another, one issue after after another. You know, and so we weren't we weren't promised you know happiness as a daily companion in this life, but we were promised that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will never let us down. That's what He promised us. He will not let us down. He promised us also that He will never give us something that we cannot handle. Which is a great, a great, uh, you know, news from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala that in Allah la yukallifu nafsan that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala does not give a soul that which which cannot handle, you know, and so Allah Subhanahu wa Taala does not want us to or does not want to see us completely wasted, you know. Um, inshallah, this is gonna come to an end soon, you know. Uh, just trust Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Uh, as we were taught also that everything has a high and low and what goes up must come down. And so similarly, tough times only mean that times of ease, inshallah, are near. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرَىٰ إِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرَىٰ So inshallah, everything will be fine. Just trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Again, faith is trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when life doesn't make any sense to you. You know, uh, just trust him. You know, you're in good hands. You know, you're in good hands. You're in good hands. So trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, I will end with this. I remember when I was a little boy, uh, 
وان ديون دي uh, ملجا العامريه uh, it was an orphanage in Baghdad that was um, uh, was hit by an air strike in 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 uh, during a gulf war and uh, i remember that a lot of kids a lot of innocent people uh, were killed in the air strike and um, for years i used to see nightmares about about this and i was just a little boy and i saw how many kids died from from that air strike you know and i remember that i i talked to one of my teachers and he told me you know i can talk to you about patience and lecture you about patience but look i will tell you one thing trust allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just trust the plan of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know you're in good hands so be patient trust allah please make dua make istighfar make dua not only for yourself but for everybody else make dua for the oppressed all over the world the people who who cannot or have not been praying juma because they can't for years you know make dua for them now you know make dua that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring this then and soon and remove this illnesses allahumma amin make make dua make dhikr make dhikr of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make make sure that she do the dhikr in the morning and the dhikr at night Make sure that also you spend quality time with your family. You know, this is a good opportunity also to spend time with your loved ones. You know, seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness. Reconnect to Allah. Revive your relationship. This is really the time. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless our community. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect the Muslims and, and everybody. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inshallah, uh, bring us back to the masjid very soon. Innahu waliyu dhalika wal qadir alayhi. جزاكم الله خير سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين. Before I before I go, ICI has been um, informed that there are some brothers who come here. Uh, the masjid is closed. The masjid is closed for the daily prayers. Uh, the masjid is closed for Juma. You know, uh, but there are some brothers. We were told that there's some brothers who come here for Fajr prayer to pray uh, in the parking lot, and I don't want to be rude, but please don't be selfish. You know, just stay home and pray home. Maybe you think that you're healthy, you know, uh, and you're not afraid of any disease or any virus, but you might catch it and give it to somebody who is, who is not in that state, who is ill or having some condition that might hurt him and hurt his family. So please, I understand that it, it, people, uh, it becomes very emotional for people to come to the masjid and pray and jama'ah and all of that. Uh, please, in the meantime, Islam is is telling us to protect ourselves. You know, the Prophet ﷺ said, la darara wa la dirar. You know, don't just hurt yourself, don't hurt others, you know. So if you don't care about yourself, this is really absolutely up to you. But care about others as well, you know, because this religion is 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 about all, you know. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Allahumma ameen. Jazakum Allah khair. Subhanahu wa rabbika rabbil izzati amma sifun. Wa salamun ala al-mursaleen. Wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.